What's up, end of May? How are you? I'm fine, thank you for asking. Why am I being weird? Already, already I'm being weird. Big month, did a lot of stuff, got a lot to talk about, trying to be quick, bam. First of all, the next Zapper video by you, Billy, the one that you guys picked, uh, it's being rendered right now. I'm having trouble with the file size because it's about 52 minutes. Pretty long video, but I tweaked the crap out of it for over a month, probably. It's a really long video, but I think it's good. Uh, what's there is definitely, it's always entertaining or funny or educational in some way, I think. So hopefully you like it. If not, let me know. Uh, you know, it's the longest video I've ever done technically for this type of thing. So if you guys are like, hey, the smaller ones are better, fine. Uh, let me know. I started these videos like two years ago, uh, July of 2012. And I, I kind of thought the idea was original when I first did it. And over time I was like, oh, hey, Game Center CX, you know, it's kind of like that in a way. So I was thinking of maybe doing a show kind of similar to that, just, you know, not completely ripping it off, but basically kind of ripping it off. And those those are like hour long episodes. And I was thinking, oh, I just kind of test the waters with this Bayou Billy one. So I probably will record less. I recorded over two hours of footage for this one and got it down to 50 minutes, which is actually kind of an accomplishment because going from this to half, less than half was kind of a big deal. So I did way over a thousand cuts, edits for this thing. I don't know how many, but well over a thousand. Biggest video I've ever done. So hopefully you like it. If not, let me know and I'll try to cut it down. At the end of this video, I again ask for your guys' help, so please let me know of the next seven games that I have picked out, which one you guys would like to see next. So vote below in this in the comments for this, in the comments on RetroWare, which it should be up by the time this is, it should be in RetroWare, links below, hopefully, if everything goes according to plan, which it never does, but you know. Um, and finally, I'll put it up on YouTube like next week or something. Did a podcast this month with Andrew and uh, Dave Banjo, and the point of this one was, well, King's Quest came out 30 years ago. So we talked about King's Quest and adventure games in general a bit. Not my forte, both of them liked it. So they kind of carried the podcast for the most part. And I just kind of threw my two cents in every once in a while, uneducated on the topic as I am. Later that same night, Andrew and I did a stream. You know, we're trying to do that once a month, do podcast stream same night. And we streamed starting with Bomberman Live. Well, that game came out in 2007 and I was trying to tweet, hey guys, jump on. There's nobody on that anymore. Like nobody plays that. What was I thinking? I figured it would be a cool game for multiplayer, but nobody plays it. We jumped in the server, nobody there. So uh, the first part of the video was us trying to get people to play with us on that. And then we just kind of jumped into some other games. I mean, Andrew just started playing games on his PC, stuff from Steam, uh, some indie games and stuff like that. So have a peep. It's linked below, everything, everything's linked below. I recorded and finished the video game years 1986. Man, we are just tearing them out this year. It's crazy, one after another. Um, and 87's coming up, within the next month I'll be recording that one. So yeah, really fast paced, we're getting those out quick. So check out, you know, most recent episodes of the video game years also linked below. What is this awesome music we're listening to? Well, it's producer Snafu, he put it out a new album out and it's called Emotion Knot. He's like traveling through the space of emotions. And this one, awesome artwork, uh, awesome album, check it out. It's so good. I know some of you have checked out his stuff before, but check out his stuff. It's so freaking good. I wouldn't be talking about it if it wasn't so freaking good. Peep it, you're listening to it. It's freaking brilliant. I love it. Links to buy his album, also below. Wanted to put in another segment in this one, but didn't have time, won't have time. I, like tomorrow is the day that you'll hopefully be seeing this. And I have a ton of stuff to do. Finish up with the video, Zapper video. Gotta start editing the podcast. I gotta edit this freaking thing. Edit the podcast, put that podcast up. By the way, guys, last month the podcast, it's still not up. I tried to put up the edited version from the stream and I got it up in time. However, technical problems, it didn't go up as, as planned. So we've been using FeedBurner for all of our podcasts so far, and I've heard that that's not so reliable. Yeah, it's really not reliable. I've had some problems before. Obviously, when things don't come out, I always say technical problems. Well, that's the technical problem, really. And it's been, we've been trying to put it up multiple times, this most recent one, and it's still not up. So hopefully, at the end of this month here, when this video is out, you'll get the podcast from last month and the podcast from this month within a few days, hopefully, because I need to edit it and get it out. This one's gonna be less edited than my prior podcast because of a time constraint, but I'm gonna try to get it up tomorrow and it should be out hopefully in a couple days. 
Uh, sorry, updates, I'll tell you on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter at goingmon 47 I'll tell you there, or I'll try to update this video when I finally get it up. Sorry, two podcasts up this month. One from last month, one from this month, sorry. So last month I mentioned I had to put out the update video a little early because I was doing something important a couple days later. Well, I went to Connecticut and I hung out with Lance. Stayed at his house, his game room. You might've seen his game room video. I'll link that down below too. If you haven't, check it out. Oh my gosh. It's freaking, it's a paradise. Like his basement is video games everywhere. Non-stop video games. He puts mine to shame. He's got way more games than I do. He's got like, he must have like 14 freaking arcade cabinets downstairs, full arcade cabinets and thousands of games. He doesn't even know how many games he has. He's got thousands of games. Freaking ridiculous, peep it out. Dan from Pixels to Plastic and Norm the Gaming Historian showed up and we all had a party. Well, every day was like a party, playing video games nonstop, hunting for video games. There's too much stuff to talk about, honestly. There's a bunch of stuff. Had a lot of fun, played a lot of great games, great time with the guys, game chased all the time. There's hopefully a video in the works about it so I can stop talking about it now. Peep it, eventually. So let's go into what I've been playing. Which comes first, pickups or playing, who cares? While I was in Connecticut, played some awesome games that I had heard Lance talk about before on some of his reviews, one of which was Vib Ribbon for the PlayStation. I'd been looking forward to playing that game for a really long time and it did not disappoint. That game was ahead of its time, friggin' awesome uh, rhythm game where you can actually put your own music CD in there and it will grab the mu music from there. It's like there's Audio Surfer. It's like that game Audio Surfer on PC. I think that's what it is. But Vib Ribbon came way before that and it did the same thing and it was way cooler. Like the music that's actually in the game is like crazy experimental Japanese electronic music. It's really freaking cool. I gotta find that game and get it. It's so awesome, peep it. Got to play Pepsi Man. Pepsi Man. You gotta see Lance's video. I'm gonna link these videos below. You gotta check them out. Uh, it's, it's like a weird promotional character for Pepsi. It's a character called Pepsi Man. And the game, the game features like the crazy Pepsi Man running around collecting Pepsi and some like char characterization of Americans, which is hilarious, this guy, like, yeah, you gotta see it. And the video is freaking funny and the game is hilarious. And you would think that this would be just like a free thing that they use to promote Pepsi. No, it's like a full price game, but it's actually, I think it's worth it because it's just so quirky and weird. It's right up my alley. I gotta get that game too. Now I gotta get two games. We also played Dream Mix TV World Fighters, I believe is how it's said. That's something like that. It's like a Konami version of Smash Brothers. And you might have heard about it before. Um, we got to play that with, with a few people. You know, it's not quite as in-depth, you know, as, as Smash Brothers is. I mean, it's a little bit more simplistic than that. But, you know, that's cool that you've got all these different characters coming from these different worlds together to fight. You know, you got the little baseball guy. And then you got, like, Master Higgins. You know, well, his name's not Master Higgins, but from Adventure Island. Talk about it in my Zapper video. You'll, you'll see. Like I said, he's got all these arcades. He has a main cabinet. Uh, we played Bucky O'Hare on it, the four of us, and, and beat it, actually. That was a lot of fun. We played a bunch of like vertical Japanese shooters. Um, a lot of them were by a company called Cave, which I actually didn't really know anything about until Lance. Lance knows so much about games. He has tons of games, and he knows a lot about them. Um, talking about Cave, the company that made those games, like they're really great shooters. I need to check out some of those. I don't know if they're available anywhere else, but I was once blind, but now I'm found or something. Something I can see now. I don't know. I beat Yoshi's New Island. New Yoshi's Island, Yoshi's New Island, whatever. Um, talked about it last month. You know, it got some really lukewarm reviews. I did not really know that at the time. And I was playing, it's like, yeah, you know, this is, uh, you know, it's Yoshi's Island and, and that kind of stuff. I think it's a good game. Um, maybe got a little bit of a bad rap. I don't think it's quite on par with, you know, Yoshi's Island, but I mean, I like the style of it a lot. And I can tell there's a lot of replay value because you have to go through and like get all the red coins and like the flowers and all that stuff. So I definitely can go back and play it again if I want to, but I kind of just wanted to get through it real quick because I just need to move to the next thing. So maybe one day I'll come back to it, but I thought it was pretty good. I don't know. It got bad reviews. I think it's a decent game. Started playing Mario Brothers uh, Dream Team. It's like Super Mario RPG 4 or 5 or something like that. I'd played it before and I kind of put it down, started playing some other games. I think Zelda took my time uh, up, but I beat that. Now I beat Yoshi, coming back to it. I'm like 15 hours in. I'm enjoying that, so playing through that game now. Finally got caught up on The Walking Dead. Um, I went back, actually I played the first episode of the, no spoilers, don't worry. I played the first episode of the second season and then I went back and played 400 Days 
of summer or 500 days of summer or whatever it's called, 400 days. Uh, played that and then went back and played episode two of the second season. And this isn't really a spoiler, but actually worked out pretty well that way. So play it however you want, but it didn't ruin anything. But there is kind of like a tie-in between the two that you'll catch and it's not, you know, huge deal, but check them out. Uh, obviously, everyone knows The Walking Dead games are great. So I, I'm caught up now, episode three, season two. Can't wait for the next one. Coming out soon, might be out, I don't know. Just when I thought I had almost finished Earth Defense Force 2025, I don't think this is a spoiler, but there's over 80 levels. I'm on like 83 or something right now, and it's freaking hard. You know, I'm playing on normal, just going my first pass, and I'm gonna go through with other characters. I put over 20 hours into the game already, and I just, I freaking love it. Like, it's not for everybody, but if you just wanna disconnect your brain and just sit there and shoot big bugs and stuff and robots and crazy huge stuff, play that game. It's insane. If you love the EDF games before, check this one out. If you never played them, maybe start with 2017, but this game is so good. It's just fun. It's just fun. It's dumb fun. Enough about me. Let's talk about some games, shall we? Picked up a bunch of games. Like I said, we went game chasing in Connecticut. I'm gonna rapid fire talk about the games that I got. Starting old school, Smurf, Rescue and Gargamel's Castle on the ColecoVision. I friggin' love this game. I remember playing this with my cousin back in way, like right when it came out basically. Played the crap out of this game. Early platformer, uh, goofy platformer, but a lot of fun. I love this game. Guess what I don't have though? ColecoVision, that's on the list. I gotta friggin' get a ColecoVision. I'm on the lookout for them everywhere I go. Never can find one. I found an add-on for a ColecoVision in the store, but didn't have the ColecoVision. Rocky on the Sega Master System. Man, I know this is a pleasure to look at. Look at that. <laughs> There's nothing going on there, but I got this game because I know that Drago is in it. I saw like a screenshot or something online and I want to play it. It looked like a good game. And I have, I don't have a Sega Master System. I have a Sega Genesis and a power base converter, I think is what it's called, which I think is what you need to be able to play it on, uh, to play Master System games on the Retron 5 which I heard just came out, but apparently it's not going to stores until June 6th or something. So people that already pre-ordered it online or something probably have theirs already. So excited for that. I was waiting for the Retron 5 for a while. People were getting upset about it being delayed and that kind of stuff. And you know, I know stuff about gaming culture because I worked in a game store since I was 16. I worked there for a couple, like a year and a half or two years. And people were constantly getting upset about that kind of stuff. Like, hey, you know, when's Driver coming out on PlayStation 1? People were asking about it, asking about it. And it got delayed. I think it was one of the games that got delayed, happened all the time. And people were livid. And I'm like, to me, I don't care. If it's gonna take that long to make it correct, make it right without bugs or make it work well, just wait for it, for goodness sake. You know, Retron 5, I was like, oh, foaming at the mouth too. I wanted to get one for Christmas and then they delayed it. But they were saying, we're testing out all the games to make sure it works. Great, you know, do that. I'd rather buy a complete product and wait than buy one now that maybe needs a patch, which I don't even know if they can do that with that, or something that's just incomplete and it doesn't work right. I get so frustrated when things don't work right because I hate technical problems. Just take your time, make it right the first time and done. Sorry, that was a rant. Speaking of Sega Master System though, Fantasy Zone, the maze. <laughs> I don't know what it is, it just looks interesting. I like Fantasy Zone. Cloud Master for Sega Master System. I have never heard of this game, but it's like a shooter and it looked really interesting. Look at that crazy art. You gotta love the artwork on Sega Master System. It is goofy as hell. Yeah, I think I got like 40 games, sorry. I got Monster Hunter 2 on PSP. I have a couple games in the Monster Hunter series and I don't think I've ever played one of them. I only know is they're really popular in Japan and I've just meant to check them out for a long time. Done. Midway Arcade Treasures on Xbox, the first one. I own the second one and therefore there's the third one because I didn't have it, but I got it now. I bought games for like every system. For Xbox, I got Guilty Gear X2. I remember playing the original Guilty Gear and I don't think I've played any since, but I think I own a couple of them. Welcome to my life. I buy games and I'll play them. I just bought Mario Kart 8 this morning. Just put it on the shelf. When am I gonna get to it? Probably never. It's sad. I need to play it while it's online. Odama on GameCube. I remember seeing this game a long time ago and I thought it sounded cool. I don't think I had a mic for it and I think it was just the, the you know, loose case and that's not gonna work. But I own a mic so I can play this game. It looks super weird. Crazy strategy game, I guess? I don't know. Zombie Revenge Dreamcast Import. I actually bought this game not knowing that Zombie Revenge came out in the US. It has a terrible cover. That, that looks dumb. 
I bought, I didn't buy this game. I remember playing it now, but I, you see the cover and you're like, that doesn't look like a good game. Why would I buy it? But I played this game in the arcade. I played it with Justin actually last year and uh, Zombie Revenge is actually a pretty cool like zombie beat em up game. It's goofy. Um, but there's one part where like, if you don't have time to get through an area, you're timed. It says there's no time. And I thought that was pretty cool. So tweeted a picture about that. But anyway, I bought it for that reason. But now I know I could have just bought the American version. Oh, well, whatever. I have a converter for this. It's a Japanese version. Could be different in the US. I don't know. Genji for PS2. This was on my list of games that I wanted and I don't remember why, but I got it. Fatal Frame 2. I own the first one. I heard a lot about this series and I remember playing the first one briefly on PS2 or GameCube or something. I don't know. And I don't really know much about it. Clock Tower 3. I'm always on the lookout for the first Clock Tower, but I can never freaking find it. But I want to play. Uh, when I say the first one, I mean the first one on PlayStation, um, not the one on Fam Super Famicom. But I'd like that one too if it's in English. Ape Escape Trace, that's the third one. I have beaten the first two and probably some others in the series. And Ape Escape is just a really fun game. Uh, I can't think it was the second one that had like a Metal Gear tie-in. It was, no, Metal Gear 3 had an Ape Escape tie-in. Yeah, that was really weird, but very cool. Metropolis Mania 2, it looks like some crazy Japanese sim game. And I I own the first one, never played it, but now I have the second one too. Zips. Robotech Battle Cry, PS2. I don't know. Oh no, actually this was recommended to me by Norm, so I'm gonna peep it out. Some of these games were games that were recommended to me either by Lance, Dan, or Norm, or they just said, hey, have you ever heard of this? I'm like, nope, getting it. That's about how hard it takes, it, that's about as much convincing as I need. I got Armored 2, another age, right? Yeah, another age. I actually thought I owned, on PS2, I actually thought I owned the first one, and I think I might have at one time, but I probably traded it in, but man, that's a great game, and I have not played many others in the series. I might have rented this one now that I look at the back of it, but now I own it. It'd be nice to sit down and play these games one day. The Ring on Dreamcast. I remember I played this at the game store I was talking about when I used to work there, and I thought the ring had to do with like a phone ring. Like someone's gonna call you and that's like the horror story, the ring, Brrr. No, it's the ring like from the movie, the ring. And I wanna check it out. Ever since I found out that it was based on the movie, I believe, I was like, man, I gotta definitely get this. So we'll see, it looks very weird. I actually passed this up at CGE last year and Norm picked it up and I was like, oh, instant regret. I got caught, I got caught slipping. Game chasers, all right. So Dragon Quest Seven. I really wanted to get this because Dragon Quest Eight was so good and I've only played a little bit of the first couple ones and then I played the eighth one and the eighth one's amazing and I just thought this looked pretty cool. So I will peep it. I've never heard of this game. RC De Go on PlayStation, some crazy Japanese uh, Taito game where you race uh, remote control cars. Uh, looks good to me. Too extreme. I bought this because Lance did a friggin' hilarious review of the extreme games. I think the first one is ESP and extreme and he did a review of it. I'll link that below too. Friggin' hilarious. And ever since then I was like, I should probably pick that up. And I saw it when I was out there. I was like, oh, check it out, Lance. He's like, yeah, you should totally get it. It's a good game. All right, peep it out. Tokyo Highway Battle PlayStation. This game is, I believe, the first in the series. It ended up becoming Tokyo Extreme Racing, I believe, the one that was on Dreamcast. And there were several others after that on PS2 and that. So I thought it'd be cool to own the first one. It looks pretty good. So hopefully it is. Sheep. Why did I buy this? Look at it. It just looks interesting. Is it good? I don't know. Kind of reminds me of uh, Silicon Valley or something like that, but uh, I don't know. Contra 4 on DS. This game I bought from a store where actually Lance knew the guy that owned the store. He was really freaking cool. Uh, hopefully you'll get to see some of that in the video that we end up doing. Uh, but this was a decent price. I haven't been able to find it for a decent price for a while, so that was sweet. Uh, a guy in the store was actually like, he recognized me, which is really cool. They were playing our freaking video in the store. It was awesome. Uh, and he said, oh man, I was looking at that. I was like, oh, did you want to get it? He's like, nah, it's better that you get it. You know, save me from myself. So I picked it up to do him a favor, really. All right, it was for me. And then I got Blades of Thunder 2. No, it's not what it is. It's actually just a case to hold Pacross DS, which I have Pacross 3D on the DS, but I didn't own this game yet. So now I have just the cart, but that's all I need. I'm okay with it. I don't have to have complete all the time. I'd prefer complete, of course, but sometimes you just get what you get. I just want to play the game. Bust a Move 2 on the Nintendo 64. I own it already on PS2, but meh. A lot of these were buy two, get one free deals, so I just picked up whatever. Chameleon Twist 1. I own the second one, so own this now. Glover. All right. 
Conquest of the Crystal Palace NES. Norm recommended it. I don't know anything about it. Oh, I think you've got like a dog sidekick, so that sounded interesting. Ninja Kid NES. Kiwi Craze. I believe this is New Zealand story, so I like that series. I like those games, I want to play them. The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. I saw Audino play this on Game Center CX and I was like, oh, I gotta play that giant squid and stuff, yep. I have been looking for this game for a long time, Clash at Demon Head, and it was a decent price. I kind of figured this game was like rare or expensive or something. Eh, not so much. Decent price, I think I bought it for like 15 bucks or something like, maybe 12 or something like that. And I never, ever, ever see this. But then I saw multiple copies at this store. Lance's friend had multiple copies in his store. Awesome. So Dan was there. He recommended this game. He bought this at MAGFest last year. Uh, Bomber B. Daman? Bomber B. Daman, I guess is what it is. So uh, Super Famicom, want to peep it. I love Bomber Man. Obviously, I was talking about that. Roku de Nash Blues. Uh, I guess it's based on a manga. And this is a Super Famicom game. It's a fighting game. I did some research before I bought it. I believe it's a fighting game. Can't be playing RPGs because don't speak Japanese as much as I should. I want to get back into it. Goemon 3 Super Famicom. I did not own this game surprisingly, but I do now. How many times have I said that? Ranma 1 half. Uh, Justin talked about this in one of his videos uh, about the Ranma games. And this was one of the not good ones, but I didn't own it and I wanted to, now I do. This is a Fatal Fury game, I believe. Fatal Fury special on Super Famicom. Finally, Super Chinese World 3. That name means buy it. Super Chinese World, not just that, three? You gotta buy it, I bought it. And last but certainly not least, I got these Samba Samba uh, maracas for Samba de Amigo on the Wii. And apparently they never came out with official maracas for the Wii. They did on Dreamcast and I super regret never buying those. That's why I bought Samba de Amigo on the Wii because I never bought it on the Dreamcast. I played it and I was like, this is freaking awesome. And so I bought these. They're generic, but they seem to be all right. And they were superly, pr yeah, superly, certainly priced right. I think it was like, I got them for two bucks. It's generic, but you know, they should probably work. That was a long video. So that's a month in a nutshell. Want to do some other stuff, a little uh, segment maybe uh, next month. And I'm going to be working on some other stuff. I don't even want to talk about it at this point because I don't even know. I'm busy as crap. So uh, other than that, thanks for staying tuned and I'll see you next month.